This is Mark Kepler at Purdue University Extension Service, and I'm the Extension Educator uh, in Fulton County. And what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about what's going on in corn plant. Everybody's seeing them out this time of year. They're out in the field. They're working around. And so I've got George Crom here with me today. George is one of the, the farmers. In fact, we're right out in front of George's house. And he's going to talk to us, and we're going to talk a little bit back and forth about what's going on with these planters and how things are really changed through the years. And when you see them out in the field, what's really Really going on with these things. So George, welcome today. Thanks, glad to be here. All right, well I'm going to start out first talking about, we've got a planter in front of us. This is a how many row planter? This is a 16 uh, row planter and we're planting on 30 inch uh, spacing, which means uh, crossways uh, 30 inches apart from one row to the next. Okay. Uh, we're planting uh, 34,000 kernels of corn per acre and that's uh, about a little over six and a half inches apart down the road. Well just in the little bit you've talked about already I got a lot of questions I can ask along that line. You got 30 inch rows that's means it's 30 inches between each row. Why are you, uh, why are you, well, that's changed over the years. Right, uh, uh, it's gone from uh, 38, 40 inches uh, uh, down to, th uh, th we're at 30 and that's basically the common width right now, but there's people trying 20 inch rows, or people trying uh, twin rows, and, and so uh, everything's kind of getting closer together all the time. Well the 30 inch row, the old idea is to, to, to maximize the amount of sun that we're getting from that, and the narrower we get the rows, the more coverage of that foliage we're going to have over the field, and the more maximization of that sun we can get. Right. You most of the energy as from the sun is coming from the top leaves and uh, you want that covering all the space you can and so the closer you get them the the more advantageous it is to get sunlight for uh, photosynthesis. I like to tell the tale and it truly involves a tale of how we came along with the 40 inch rows we used to have to begin with. Maybe you ought to talk about your your way your grandfather may have used to do things. Well, not only my grandfather but my father. Okay. Uh, my father uh, uh, started farming with horses and uh, they needed to be 40 inches wide uh, for the horse's butt to go down through the field. Okay. So uh, uh, that that and then we used to cultivate corn with tractors after that and uh, and now we don't do much of that and so that allowed us to get narrower rows too. So necessity is why we had 40 inches row because we could get the rear end of that horse down between the rows in case we wanted to cultivate it. Yeah, and they had to cultivate. Yeah, and they had to cultivate and that's exactly right. So the other thing you brought up was the population. Yeah. That is the number of seeds I'm putting out per acre here. That has changed also. Oh yes, uh, 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 it keeps going up uh, because the hybrids uh, adapt and can produce more. Um, but uh, I think when I started farming maybe 20, 22,000 kernels per acre was considered uh, heavy planting and now uh, we don't don't even think about that uh, uh, 34 32 to 36 and probably is a common population for most farmers in Fulton County well let's take a look at what's going on and I'm going to start first before I even get to the planter here by looking at the field and what's going on in this field is uh, there's a bunch of corn stalks laying around here there's a bunch of dead weeds around here uh, what look like a nice smooth silk flower uh, plowed up field to me George well it's not I'm a no-till farmer okay and uh, uh, what we're looking at and what counts to me is this this area right here and that's nice and smooth. Um, this field has not been tilled. Uh, these corn stalks are from two years ago and uh, there's some bean stubble from last year. Uh, we have row cleaners that clean this out, put it in the middle. Uh, this conserves um, water and uh, protects the soil from erosion and uh, it, it, it's been working good for us. Uh, some, some people will recognize this field. It was a parking lot for the Farm Progress Show. Okay. So a couple different things here. One of them is by no tilling. There you go. Talk about that guy. Right, right there. there's an earthworm. And here's another one. Uh, by no tilling we have super amounts of earthworms and, uh, and they help in drainage. They, they do a lot of things in decomposing the residue. Uh, till fall all this residue will be uh, decomposed. The corn doesn't decompose as fast because uh, 
uh, biotechnology partly, yep. and uh, we have stronger stalks, heavier stalks, so it takes longer for them to decompose, but about um, every two years they'll decompose. Uh, they're laying on top of the ground too. The ground isn't getting to them, the soil's yeah. not getting to them, they just don't yeah. decompose. But as long as you can push it out of the way and get that seed in there, you've got area for the sun to get to that, to warm that up, to germinate that seed and pop it on right. through there. Right, and it's, it works good. And not only does no-till uh, help the environment tremendously, George, uh, you didn't have to come out here with a big old tractor and a big old disc and big old plow and spend all sorts of energy doing that. Right. Um, no. Uh, uh, fuel um, fuel savings is great, though uh, uh, fuel isn't the expense we have. I don't want to lead that, but our farm records will show that we can plant and harvest and go a year on this uh, on our farm with about um, three to three and a half gallon of diesel fuel per acre. And if we're on a conventional tillage uh, system, Purdue would say that would be eight to ten gallon an acre. Well, when the pioneers come in here, they cut down all the trees. This all used to be trees here at right. one time. Started farming the soil around here and plowing it up and plowing it up and one of the things they did was they really lowered the amount of organic matter in that soil and had taken right. it down and so what does this do for organic matter? Okay um, I can't give you specific numbers but the organic matter is coming back up as we no-till. Um, you know it was probably as low as uh, on this soil right here a Miami soil it's probably got as low uh, 30 years ago as maybe two percent and it's running about four and a half percent now. And that means it's more flow it's better able to handle the seed. It's not as hard. Compact as easily, and and compaction's a big thing in production. And and if you're um, a no-tiller, you have less compaction because you're running less equipment over the field. And we got these earthworms. We got this crop residue, and you just feel kind of cushion on the ground. Yeah, it's really changed it quite a bit, and it's amazing. I, I bet you're probably getting it almost back to about the same organic matter it was when the pioneers first came in here. It's probably close, I, but I do know it, it, it over years it is increasing. Not real fast, but it does increase. Oh, it's a slow process, yeah. but it's a good process. Yes. Okay, let's go back here and take a look at this planter a little bit. So um, there's a lot of different things here. First off, right off the bat, George, I'm used to seeing a big old thing setting up here which you put the seed in, and you're supposed to go down here and open every one of them and drop a bag of seed. What's changed here? Okay, uh, it's changed to what we call bulk fill, central fill. Uh, our seed hopper is this big uh, hopper here instead of down here individually. Uh, then uh, the seeds there, uh, one of those uh, handles eight, eight, eight rows and the other in eight rows. Uh, we, we actually blow the seed down to this uh, metering system. And in this metering system, there would be about uh, three handfuls of corn. Okay. And it just it's automatically keeps refilling it as you go down through the field. And then when it gets down when when it gets down to the metering unit here, then um, um, then we have a vacuum system. We have two air systems. One's okay. a vacuum system, one's and the vacuum system is the planting system. Okay. And it it vacuums seed into this disc here and um, um, as it comes up here, uh, the vacuum's released and the seed falls down to the row. So this is like the old farmers used to have called a planter plate. Right. And that makes it drop every so many inches. Right. And you got to get those inches just right because if they're too close together, uh, that's not good. And if they're too far apart, it's not right. good. Right. So, um, so this little disc keeps turning around and and I can't tell you the revolutions, but uh, every 17 and a half feet, which is a thousandth of an acre, uh, we planted 34, um, 34 th uh, seeds. Each uh, row unit would have, uh, as you see here, about that much seed in it. And then you got this uh, uh, seed disc here that it turn and you got vacuum and it comes up here and it drops it out. And it just keeps turning and it fills every hole by vacuum. And uh, it also, as this seed is used, is refilled with uh, air from the central hopper. So it's pretty simple. This little piece here just keeps it stirred so you don't, um, you don't uh, have buildup. Uh, uh, the seed has so much uh, uh, seed treatment and stuff, if it gets damp, it sometimes gets sticky. And uh, so um, 
This seed here. Yeah, we need to talk about this seed because I'll tell you, this is one of the biggest changes we see in, in agriculture going on is the amount of things that it can pack into this seed yes. and how it has changed over the years. Now, I'll go back again to the, your, 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 fa your fathers and grandfathers. We went to the corn crib. We got the ear of corn. It looked the best out of that corn crib. We shelled that off of there. The corn in the middle, not in the ends because it didn't look as good, shelled that off there. That's what we used to plant you know, for the next planting for the next year. How has this changed? What's, what are the differences in this seed? Well, uh, it's changed tremendously. We still need good genetics from corn, but uh, this seed is treated with uh, insecticide and fungicide. That's why it's green. Uh, it can be other colors too. And then this seed is triple stack corn. It is Roundup resistant. So which means we can spray this field with Roundup and not hurt hurt the corn. It is uh, it's um, corn borer resistant, Bt corn borer resistant. Okay, Bt is a bacteria yeah. that they now have bred into the corn yeah. that when the bug eats this, takes a bite of it, he dies from yes. eating that bacteria. So he doesn't go to the next plant, and so um, uh, we have the, this Bt uh, corn borer, and then we also have our corn. Western corn rootworm resistance in the seed too, which um, protects the seed uh, roots in, in the ground. So a couple things happen here. A lot of the, there's tremendous genetics in this seed too. The genetics against diseases, genetics that allows the corn to pop up out of the ground faster and grow even when the soils are cool. Genetics that resist the drought right. more than, I mean we still have problems, but it, it resists it more than we ever have. It stands better. We have all kinds of wilts and, and uh, blights that it's resistant to. Um, you know, I'm going to say it's resistant to 15 or 20 different uh, pests that could could be here. Uh, they aren't all here at one time, but it, it, we got the insurance that we're protected. Okay, and so all that's in this seed, at the, at, and I I bet the price has changed a little bit. Yeah, the price has changed a lot, but uh, um, the price uh, uh, the seed here is running about uh, uh, three hundred dollars a bag. That's how much an acre. That is uh, over a hundred dollars an acre. Versus maybe ten years ago, what do you uh, think? maybe forty, okay. forty-five, forty, forty-five, and uh, but. We are not using soil insecticide. Okay, so there's no, what you mean by that, there's insecticide on this, but these old planters used to have a big, another thing on yeah. them that dropped chemicals down into the soil and killed the bugs right around the seed then. Right, and uh, um, we, we aren't using that, and that environmentally and uh, uh, health-wise, uh, we're all at an advantage of that. Yeah. And then, uh, 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 you know, we don't we we don't have to do so many things. Uh, uh, it's all here in the seed, and uh, actually probably saving us money. The herbicide is Roundup resistant. We use Roundup as a main chemical, not the only chemical, and uh, that that is. Roundup is cheap compared to other chemicals. You know, as we have watched agriculture, we have watched the price of seed go up, machinery go up, fertilizer go up, but one of the things that really hasn't went up a lot is chemicals. Right, right. And uh, uh, we, we can uh, spray this field. Um, actual cost of Roundup is probably, un I know, un okay. and, and I, 10 years ago we were probably spending $30 an acre on chemical. Uh, control. Good news, bad news. One of the things we got to watch is with this Roundup that we're using is because it's so easily cheap and do we can look at possibility of weeds being resistant to it over spray, over spray, over spray and you build up a resistant population. You worry about that. Yes I do. Uh, so uh, this field, uh, this field uh, our tillage was a spray to kill what I was growing here which was Roundup and we used uh, uh, some 2,4-D with it so we got different modes of action and then when we, we will spray this twice in the second application of uh, will be round up again with a chemical called warrant and it has a little residual grass control and uh, so we have several modes of action in a year and uh, that warrants off uh, resistance. I'm not going to say it's ends it, but it, it lowers the possibility. And what you mean by modes of, of action is it works in a, this herbicide works at a different point in that weed. Right. If we have a herbicide works at the same 
point in that weed and the same growing of it that we can be resistant to that part. And that's why we use these different, which you refer to as mode of actions. And all, all those different herbicides have different modes, different some, spots they work. Some stop um, um, photosynthesis. Some stop the, uh, uh, the enter the shoot when it comes up. Some go through the roots to be uptake. So uh, there's all kinds of action by chemicals. And they're different. So you want different ones. So to avoid this resistance. Okay, that's a big problem with us. Well, George, let's put this thing back together and we're gonna go back around in front and see what's going on on the front of these, these units here, okay? Well, George Crom, uh, we're here at your field. We're taking a look at some things that are going on. I want us to take it to the front of this planter and start by talking about this no-till planting. And we're gonna take a look down here at the things in front that shove the corn out of the way. What are these things doing? Okay, we call them row cleaners, and there's several types, but I'm using kind of a spike tooth uh, a, a wheel. Uh, they move uh, the, the residue out to the side about uh, six, seven inches uh, from the center, uh, total, uh, and then that allows the planting unit where the seed's going to be planted to plant in uh, fresh, uh, fresh dirt, uh, no residue, nothing to uh, impede the uh, emergence of the seed. Yeah, that residue can get in the way of the later on we got right. some things that cut right. in there. Like, uh, uh, if you had a corn stalk laying in the row, a uh, plant might not be able to push itself th through that or around it. Or it may not be planted at the right depth. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing. Yeah. We're planting at about uh, uh, two inches of depth. Okay. And, uh, and so uh, uh, they all, everything has to work in combination. Uh, the row cleaner, and then there's uh, double disc openers down it below, and they, they make a seed trench. And uh, behind that seed trench, um, the uh, seed, uh, seed is deposited, and we're putting a little fertilizer in that seed trench. And then we have uh, discs and wheels to bring the soil into the seed and pack it over, uh, firm it over the top. And so in there firm down if it was really wet today um, and you were out here planting and the ground was really wet uh, it, it's not good for a lot of reasons what would those be well uh, one uh, one it, it would just uh, soil can build up on on the wheels and and uh, the residues wet and it just doesn't move Physically just ain't just good. just isn't good yeah. uh, it's a combination of things uh, and uh, uh, you need to firm the soil over the seed, you want good soil to seed contact, but if you do it too wet in this type of soil uh, and we get hot, uh, it could uh, crust over and make it hard to come up. Um, you, and sometimes it's, if it's too wet, it, you can't get the soil back over the it seed right. doesn't cover the seed yeah. right. Okay, well let's sit back and take a look at this whole planter. We haven't had an opportunity to look at the whole thing a little bit. And we have got, at the top up there, we have got uh, uh, the seed goes into these two different units here. This round tank right in front, would that be your... Uh... That's all right, my fertilizer. Okay. And uh, that, it goes through a pump up in the front and out, and it's metered through a small orifices to make sure we have uh, five gallon an acre. Those seed hoppers hold about, uh, varying on seed size, but about 50, if you fill them, about 50 bags of seed. So um, you could realistically have uh, over 200 acres of seed in there if you fill them. We don't always fill them, but uh, so you uh, fill up with bulk seed and uh, you aren't stopping and going to every row and uh, filling seed very often. So, Okay, George. Well, this is kind of the operation that goes on with the planting. We've got it all through the different things. We've got it into the ground. We're going to take a look then at inside of the tractor because your job inside of there is doing some other things as we're going along. Uh, we don't want to see rows going like this, sneaking down through the field. And we also want to make sure that every one of these units is working properly. Right. So let's go inside there and take a look. Okay. Uh, uh, to operate the corn planter, we uh, use GPS uh, totally. Uh, it guides our tractor with uh, auto steer. And uh, we plant on this monitor, it shows a picture that uh, we're planning, uh, where we're planting and we're on line. We have straight rows. Uh, mo uh, we do not use markers on our planter. We depend totally on GPS. Our planter depends on GPS also. Uh, 
uh, we have a monitor here for the pl that's just for planner functions, and uh, uh, we can we can check how many seeds an acre we're planting. These here show what each row's planting, and uh, we have automatic shutoffs so you don't overplant. Um, so then another screen is uh, we got a record of what farm, what what hybrid, what year. Um, conditions. Um, we've got a, a picture here, maybe it doesn't show up, but we'll show the amount of field coverage and where we've been and uh, our GPS settings. Um, got a, uh, uh, they come up a little slow, but we can see how our fertilizer and seed coverage has been. Um, um, we can go back to performance. Uh, uh, see how many acres we planted, uh, how much time we've used, the distance, uh, kind of summary of everything we've done. Um, so we, it tells us a lot. We have a lot of information. Um, um, to run the planter, you go to a screen, and if you're in the plant mode, you go to that, and the, now it would plant corn. Um, if we want to fold it up to go to, uh, on the road, you go to a fold mode and you go through these steps and uh, the planter will fold and be down uh, narrower than your tractor in width, even though it's planting at 40 feet wide in the field and there's planters that plant a lot wider than that. So uh, 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 we've got toolboxes to, uh, to control and make the planter work. Um, most of them you don't have to use after you get them set, but you got got that opportunity and you can record your conditions of work uh, and make other calibrations. You got management. Um, uh, so uh, you, got, you got a lot of things here that are going on, but when you're going down through the field, the tractor steering itself, you can watch all this. You can watch the planter and uh, Everything works very fine. You were showing that yield mo or the monitor up there and how the system worked in the GPS system. Now that ties in tremendously to this fall when you run that combine over here, how that would work with that. Right, uh, the combine has GPS and so we can uh, see what every specific area of the field produced and or where we have problems. And we can also show up uh, tillage problems, uh, maybe a tile breakdown. We can record all that. And uh, we have that all that we can put on our home computer and study it and uh, do a better job of farming. Kind of take some of the guesswork out of things. You know, I think that spot over there never has yielded very good. And, and you'll know that from a lot of different things by using that GPS. Right, and you need to know why. And, uh, and uh, this identifies uh, potential problems and uh, and you can uh, attack it from that angle. And uh, with all the expense that we're putting into a crop, uh, every farmer in Fulton County is, uh, you can't do, uh, uh, it's best not to use guesswork. Well, yeah, it's a tremendous amount of expense going on. The land itself, the rental of the land has went up. The cost of putting it, things on there, other than we talked about with the herbicides, everything else has went up. So it, you don't want to get in too much guesswork. I know it. Uh, uh, everybody's expenses uh, are a little different, but there are some similarities. You know, you got over $100 in seed. You probably got around $100 in uh, dry fertilizer or a little more. You probably got around $100 in... Uh, in anhydrous ammonia or your nitrogen form, and you got to have equipment, you got taxes, you got land costs, whether you own them or rent them, and so, uh, and there's some other costs. Um, so you got your herbicide costs, you, you got a lot of costs there, and you got a lot of, lot laying on the line to, that you don't have total control over because we can't control the weather, we can't control some of the temperatures. Uh, and the moisture, uh, so uh, uh, we try to do everything to ensure our best chances. 
it's risk. That's what we get into. And everybody will say, well, you know what? The price of corn's up, the price of soybeans up. Things are looking a lot better here now. But the price of all these inputs we talked about are up. And so when you put out uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars out here and, and lay it on the ground and hope Mother Nature works with you, you've made this risk. Yes, you're, you're under tremendous risk, and there's good rewards, too, at most times, but uh, uh, you, you don't know what you're going to do. You have no guarantee till you have it in a bin and have it sold, and there's a lot of risk, uh, a lot of unknowns all the time, and uh, I guess we learn to live with them as farmers, but uh, as, as prices have gone up, the risk has become much greater. One of the final thing that I want to mention as we get it here and we're looking at this, with this tractor and this planter, um, you can put in a pretty good day if everything's working right. About how many acres can you do in a day? Well, um, in my case, maybe uh, 150 to 200 acres. Uh, you could maybe do better than that, but uh, we, we got other responsibilities that take us away from the field a little or take us away from the corn planter, but uh, uh, easily uh, most days plant 150 acres. Okay, so the combination of things going on, it's a really good operation and helps us get a lot done, but as a farmer, we've got other things we need to worry about too, other than just planting that day, and so, yeah, I could go and go, but I imagine I'd be pretty tired at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, you know, even this planter um, with bulk fill and uh, fertilizer, uh, you know, it, it, I, I never time myself, but you know, it takes 15 minutes to fill the fertilizer tank and you'd have to do that two or three times a day. Uh, a bulk seed uh, to get the seed around in, in the planter, uh, you know, takes some time and uh, it takes a lot less time than handling bags, but you, and you move fields, we aren't in mammoth fields. And so there's other things uh, going on. We, running a sprayer part of the time and and so yeah you know good days work out good though all right well thank you george crom appreciate to have an opportunity to take a look at your your setup and let people know what goes on in farming and here in fulton county to know what the agriculture is the farmers are doing out here and how things have changed this is mark kepler purdue extension service and thank you very much for joining us mm -hmm.